guys, I think we are pretty close to seeing Nick DeVries get dropped, but hey, it's not all over yet. There's a reason this series is called It's All Over, asterisk, or is it? Because Nick DeVries still has a chance, if you believe the current reports, to save his Formula One career. Now, when Nick entered Formula One full-time this year, I actually wasn't totally against it. I think he made a very good case, stepping in in 2022, that he was up to it. He was good enough. He had some talent there, and there was more for us to see, and it was in some ways very exciting. Of course, we all definitely wanted to see him in the sport. He proved himself. He did, you know. He showed everyone that he deserves a shot, but so far in 2023, it just doesn't really seem to be working out. Now, he is yet to score a single point. Now, he did get close in Monaco with a P12. That's the closest he came to scoring a point, and I don't think we've seen anything yet that suggests that Nick is going to improve. Now I've got to say, I take my hat off to any rookie. It is incredibly challenging. It is a, you know, high pressure sport, especially when you're just starting out full time and you probably, most of the time, don't get the fastest car. Of course, it's gonna be difficult to adapt to a machine which you're not used to. And when your car is on the slower side, I mean, I guess it is hard to really show anything. Nick has faced probably more criticism than anyone else. You know, we've seen the memes, we've seen people criticize him, the YouTubers like myself make videos on him. But the reason for a lot of this speculation, a lot of the talk and discussion, is because I think there is one driver in particular that we just really need to see in a Formula One car full time. And that is Liam Lawson. I think this guy has it all. I think he can do a lot in Formula One. I think he is pure talent. As exciting as a young guy can get, in my opinion, Liam Lawson is someone that I'm just waiting for the day he's announced as a Formula One driver. Now, the reports coming from the Dutch press are suggesting that Nick de Vries has four races to save his career. Now, Austria apparently counted as one of those races, so from now on, he has three races to save his career. Now, this is going by the news reports. Not exactly always going to be true, but Franz Tost had an interesting sort of response to these questions, saying that it is up to Nick. The ball is in his court. It's up to him now to make these stories go away. And for me, it is kind of a bit of a confirmation in a way. That's just how I see it. That's Franz Tost for me saying, look, it's up to Nick now to save his career. That's how I read it. I also want to show you a post on Twitter that I saw from a podcast. It is a small clip. I want to put it in the link below so you can actually go and watch it on the person who's posted it. I just don't want to paste it in my video. It was on a podcast hosted by Kunal Shah, who spoke to Helmut Marko. Now, he asked if Helmut Marko and Christian Horner ever disagree on drivers. And Helmut Marko went on to say that the most recent one was Nick de Vries. And so far, Christian Horner has been right. Again, you need to think, is the sort of Red Bull institution losing hope now in Nick de Vries as well? Now, a lot of other people have brought up Daniel Ricciardo as a possible replacement. I think that that is also possible, but the Dutch media reports are suggesting that it is going to be Liam Lawson if there's going to be some sort of mid-season swap. Now, for me, I love Daniel Ricciardo. I really do. I think he's a great driver. I have a cutout of him behind me, a cardboard cutout of Daniel himself right behind me. But for me, it has to be Liam Lawson. I think it just has to be him. I think that coming in mid-season might be a little bit risky, but with drivers like this, you believe in their talents and their ability to adapt. I think Lawson has performed everywhere he has gone. Of course, we saw it in Formula 2. We saw it in DTM, where he nearly won the championship in his first season. And Super Formula, winning on his debut. Super Formula is known to be very competitive, very feisty. Liam walks in and wins. This is a driver who I think is incredibly adaptable, built for it, up for it. These are the drivers I want to see in Formula One. It is a bit disappointing though for Nick De Vries because I honestly, I wanted to see him in Formula One. I wasn't against him coming in. I thought it was justified. I thought he was ready and he deserved his shot. 
part of me wants him to improve over the next few races because who knows I've always said and I kind of do stick by this I think you need to give a rookie two seasons I think that that is a fair way to gauge where a driver is and if they're up for it or not Nick still has a few races to prove everyone wrong, if the reports are right, of course. Now, we have seen Christian Horner supposedly sort of shut down the Nick DeVries rumours, but you don't really get the sense that they're completely shut down and wiped away. You just feel like that there's something lingering and there's a little bit of questioning going on behind the scenes in terms of how I read it, how many other fans read it. I don't think Nick DeVries is a bad driver at all. We've seen him perform in other categories before. We've seen him be a solid driver. I think being a rookie in any sport is difficult, but I think in Formula One, I mean, I think it's just another level of pressure and expectation. I find it weird how a lot of fans, a lot of the time, turn on drivers, turn on rookies when they don't turn out to be the driver that everyone hoped for, or maybe the driver that they were hyped up to be. I don't think that's a reason to be hateful or nasty to a driver because maybe they're not having a good season or they're underperforming. I can't see Alpha Tauri giving him another season if it continues like this. Let's just say hypothetically they decide to keep him for the rest of the season, but nothing improves. I don't see any reason for them to keep him. Meanwhile, his teammate Yuki Tsunoda is getting plenty of attention for just being very solid. I think Yuki's turned a page in his career. I think he's found a way to stay calm. I think he's found a way to be consistent. I think he's discovered a way to just be a solid driver, a reliable driver. I think that's what he's been. He's been decent and reliable. I think the next month or so is crucial for Nick DeVries because I think his career is kind of hanging by a thread at the moment because the summer break is quickly approaching and we have seen changes made during that time. It seems like a good sort of time for teams to make shifts, move people around and change things. We never know what's going on with Nick's side of things. Maybe there's some behind the scenes issues with the car for him. Maybe he's just having a tough time adapting to this particular Alpha Tauri because he's not a bad driver at all. But there's some dogs waiting in the wings at Red Bull. I mean, if you want to talk about Lawson, Iwasa even, or Ricardo, they've got some guys there that could definitely do the job in Formula One, I think. But I think it is coming to an end for Nick DeVries. That's just how I feel at the moment. Let me know what you guys think about Nick DeVries. Do you think he will be out by the summer break? Do you think Alpha Tauri and Red Bull might give him until the end of the season? I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit like and subscribed. Feel free to follow me on Instagram for some behind the scenes content and future video sneak peeks. As always, I truly appreciate your support and I will see you in the next one.